Welcome back everybody to another video tutorial in our series on how to make a platform game in Unity 2018. I'm Mike Page where scripting is fun and uh, today's video we're going to be looking at how to use Unity's new camera system which is called Cinemachine uh, to set up a camera that will follow our play around while staying inside the screen bounds that we want it to. Uh, this is going to be a great time saver. We don't have to code any of this. We can just plug this in and go. So let's take a look at how we get it done. So currently in our project, when we play, we can move our player around and he can jump, but the camera is not following him. We can walk off the screen. Uh, and so that isn't what we want. So we're going to go ahead and add in some camera controls using Cinemachine. Now Cinemachine was introduced in Unity 2017 and they've been continuing to integrate it more and more into their system. So the first thing we have to do is we have to actually get Cinemachine. Um, it doesn't come pre-loaded with the basic Unity uh, with the basic Unity loadout. So what you want to do is, if you're in Unity 2018, you can go to the Package Manager window. Uh, I've got it right down here, the Package Manager. If you don't see this window, you can go up here to Window, and then Package Manager right here, and that'll open up this window. Then what you want to do is click the All button to see all the different things that we can import with the Package Manager. And we're looking for Cinemachine. So here you see Cinemachine 2.2.0 is the current version at the time of this recording. If you are running uh, Unity 2017 yet, you can still use Cinemachine, but you'll have to go to the Asset Store. So here's my Asset Store tab that I've got open. And you can search for Cinemachine, just like this, and it's a free import from the Asset Store. Even though they do have a note here that this uh, will no longer be updated on the, uh, on the Asset Store, but it will be something that you would get via the Package Manager. And that's what I'm doing right now. The version that they have here is 2.1.1, uh, and the version in the Package Manager here is version 2.2. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, install Cinemachine. All right, Cinemachine is done installing. You can see down here now it's in my project that I have it installed. So I'm going to get rid of my package manager window. And you'll also see that on your top menu bar now you have a Cinemachine drop down menu. And this is where we add Cinemachine components to the game. So there are a lot of really cool uh, Cinemachine things that you can do. And when you mix it with another newer Unity feature called Timeline, you can do some really interesting things. For this video and in our 2D platform game, we just want to set up a simple 2D camera using Cinemachine. So I'm going to go to Cinemachine menu and right here, Create 2D Camera. And I'm going to click that. Now what you'll see here is this thing called CM for Cinemachine VCAM1. It's called the VCAM because this is a virtual camera. It's not a real camera. Think of it as a position that it's going to move our main camera to. So we're con controlling the main camera through these virtual cameras. Um, over here in the inspector, here's our virtual camera. It's got a Cinemachine virtual camera script onto it. Uh, with all sorts of different settings that we can change. We're going to leave all this alone for right now. We might play with the uh, orthographic size here in a little bit just to get a good um, zoom in for our, for our screen. Uh, but that's what we have right now. So right now, if we play this, we want it to uh, follow our player. So we want to right here in the follow, we want to tell it what object to move with. All right, so we will go and drag in our player because we want to follow the player. And when I do that, you'll see over here in the game view, let's make that game view a little bigger, you'll see that I get um, kind of this big uh, blue section, and then there's this kind of reddish tinted section around it, so, and then we've got these different sets of lines. Um, we're going to get into this a little bit more, but right now you see our camera is pretty big. It sees this much space. That's probably a little bigger than we want it to see. So let's go here and play with orthographic size. I, the orthographic size is just how big is the camera. And then zoom that down in here a little bit closer. 
And you can see it's changing my camera uh, frustrum over here in the scene view as well. So let's try a size of around, uh, let's just go to a three for now and see how that works. So what we can do here now is if I hit play, we should already see that this camera is working. So there, see as I move my player around now, as soon as he leaves this little center box here, these little lines here are, are kind of how loose we can have it, where, you know, where do we start moving the camera. So as soon as I start leaving that box, the camera starts moving and you can see it's got some nice easing on it, which means it's not jerky, it's, it's going um, nice and smooth. If I jump, it's jumping the camera up and down as well. All right, so already we can see that working. So we want to make some adjustments here to this camera. So um, what you can do is we can actually grab these lines here uh, to adjust where our dead zone is here for the camera and where it should start moving. So if we get into the blue, it'll try to catch up and it'll ease in. If we ever get out to the red, it'll just uh, immediately jump uh, to keep him out of the red. So the red is even a higher amount of speed for the camera. And we can uh, control a lot of that uh, with our settings over here. But the default seems to be fine for right now. So let's just make this a little bit bigger here so that the camera doesn't move quite as much. Let's try something like this. And again, we can just kind of play with it and see what we like. So now you notice that I can get a little bit further away uh, before the camera uh, moves. And when I jump, the camera isn't just immediately moving uh, to catch that jump there. Looks like I need to jump a little higher to get to this next platform. Let me turn up my player's jump force a little bit. All right, I turned the jump force up a bit, uh, so maybe I can get up on top of this hill here. There we go. So you see the camera is moving um, only when I get out of the box. Now you have to, to see the boxes with the guidelines here. You do have to have the virtual camera selected. So if I go back and select it, then uh, you can see how that's working. So again, as we move around, we can make these a little tighter. So now maybe something like this, if you want it to center more on the screen on the player, you could make the vertical lines a little bit closer like that. It just depends on how far up and down you want the player to be able to see as he's moving. So that gives us a pretty good feel of what the camera's doing there and how it looks in the scene. So one thing you'll notice is that if I get to the edge of my level, the camera will start to see off the edge of my background image. And that's probably not something that we want to do that would kind of break the immersion of the game here a little bit, starting to see the blue back there um, on the sides of our camera here. So again, I'm over here, I'm actually off my background now. I have to make my background a little bigger so that it fills in the whole level. But let's take a look at how we can restrict our camera so that it will never look outside the boundary of our background image. So first I'm going to go ahead and make my background a little bigger here so it covers my entire level. So let's do maybe something about like so. Keep it kind of close to the edges there of the back of the layer there. So there's a couple of steps to making this work so that the camera will stay inside the boundaries of our background image. So first we have to go here to extensions in our Cinemachine virtual camera script. And if I click there, you see there's several different things here that we want. Now what we want is a Cinemachine confiner. That's going to confine the camera to a a bounded shape. Okay, so a bounding shape is required and we need to give it a shape. Now the shape we want to use is our background image. 
Okay, but for this to work, our background image needs to have a collider on it so that the camera will know whether or not it's inside of the bounding shape. So we're first going to go to our background image and we're going to add a 2D collider. Now this is important, it needs to be a polygon collider for this to work. So we do need to make sure we add a polygon collider. Uh, Unity has automatically sized it to fit the edges of my image. And then I'm going to check this as a trigger. If I don't check it as a trigger, then it'll actually collide with my player and other objects and cause things to be pushed off and all that. So we just want the, the collider here so that the camera can use it. So we're going to mark it as a trigger. Then if we go back to our camera, we can grab our background image from the hierarchy and we can drag and drop it into the bounding shape 2D here. All right, and then we can make sure it says confine screen edges are here. That will confine, confine uh, the camera to the edges of the screen so that it will um, not go off the edges. Okay, so now if we try this, as we move back and forth now, we'll see that once we get over here to the edge, the camera stops moving. See here in our scene view, how the camera, here's the camera's frustrum. It will not go outside the box here of our, um, of our background so that we can never see off the edge of our background. So if we come up here higher and we jump up, we jump up some more. You can see it's following it around here in our scene view. Let's pull that over a little bit more so we can see the whole level. And when we get to the edge here again, the camera stops moving once we hit the edge of the image. All right, so that's a great trick to uh, put in here, a great feature, which allows us to um, restrict the camera to that space. And then we never see off the edges of our screens. And cinema, this is just the bare minimum that Cinemachine can do. There's so much that Cinemachine can do. I recommend going and looking up uh, the uh, tutorial videos that Unity has on its web on, on its YouTube site. Um, and it's got some tutorials on its website as well for using Cinemachine for all the little neat uh, things that it can do. Uh, but for our project like this, um, we're going to just uh, Maybe restrict this down a bit more so that we don't so we get a little more movement up and down. Um, but for our project here, we're going to just use the simple 2D Cinemachine camera, uh, just one virtual camera in the scene, and we're able now to have a nice smoothly uh, smooth camera that follows the player around uh, that we can very easily adjust its settings, and we can restrict it to our background image. So that however big our level is, we can just size our background to fit, and then we can see what's going on real clearly here in the camera. And again, you can play with things like orthographic size. Maybe 3 is too zoomed in, so I can go out to a 4. Maybe that's better. So these are all playtest things that you can do in your game to get it how you like it. So that's where we're going to end this video today. I hope you found it interesting. I don't know if you've used Cinemachine before, but it's definitely worth learning how to use. It saves us so much time not having to code in these camera scripts and it's so easy to control and set up the settings exactly for how you want them to be. In the next video we'll look at animation states and how to set up the different animations on our player. Animations for walking, for jumping, um, maybe for attacking. We'll start setting up some of those different animations working with the animator and the animator controller and that'll be next. So hope you're enjoying the video series so far, and I'll see you in the next one.